Hi everyone, welcome to the visual guide for AAC Light Heavyweight M3 Savage. This is the third Savage Raid made available in Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail. My name is Ms. Tech and I'll be your raid guide. Before we begin, all players will need an assigned clock position and partner pairs for future shared mechanics. Our way markers are set around the center of the room like this and will aid positioning for later mechanics. The encounter begins with Brutal Impact. This is a multi-hit raid blast that will deal high damage over four consecutive hits. Shield and heal through the damage as necessary. This is followed by Knuckle Sandwich, a two-stack tank buster that both tanks will share with cooldowns or solo with an immunity. This first tank buster will deal high damage over four consecutive hits as well. The boss will then leap into the center of the room and begin to cast either Quadruple Lariat or Octuple Lariat. This cast will overlap a point-blank AoE circle with conal attacks that either target all players or four players of the same role group. If the boss is casting Quadruple Lariat, players will need to stack with their partners away from the boss to dodge the AoE circle and share the damage of the conal attacks. If the boss is casting Octuple Lariat, all players will need to move away from the boss and into their clock positions to ensure no overlap. Immediately after, the boss will face a random direction and begin to cast either Quadra Broom Dive or Octaboom Dive. This cast is a proximity-based damage jump to the edge of the arena he is facing, and players will need to move opposite this edge to reduce damage. Furthermore, if the boss is casting Quadra Boom, partner pairs will need to stack together after the jump to share the incoming damage. If the boss is casting Octoboom, all players will need to spread to avoid overlap of the incoming damage. To ensure no confusion, we assign spread and stack positions like so relative to the boss's landing point. Next up, the boss will return to the center and cast another Brutal Impact, heal and shield through the four hits as necessary. The boss will then cast Barbarous Barrage and six Soak Towers will appear either on the east and west edges or the north and south edges of the platform. Each tower has an extra knockback effect from its center and players soaking towers will be knocked away in the direction relative to that center point. The two towers in the center of each set also require four players each to soak appropriately, and these towers will be the first to explode. The towers on the outside only require two players to soak. To handle this, we split the melee and ranged players and assign them to a specific set of towers. The four players on each side will first soak the middle four-person tower. While doing so, the group further splits into two for the next set of soak towers. The two tanks and the two healers will pair up on their respective sides and aim themselves towards the towers in the left corner from the original soak tower. The melee and ranged players will do the same, but instead aim themselves towards the towers on the right. As this set is happening, an eight-person soak tower will appear in the middle of the arena. Right before the first towers explode, the boss will leap into a random corner, turn back towards the center, and begin casting Murderous Mist. This is a massive 270-degree frontal cone that will deal high damage and debuffs to anyone hit, but for now, it can be ignored. Once the first tower explosion is soaked and the first knockback goes off, players will then adjust to soak their assigned two-person towers, making sure to aim themselves towards the center of the room. Once the second knockback goes off, all players must then move into the center tower to soak the final hit. While doing so, they'll need to aim to be knocked into the boss's corner, allowing them to easily get behind him in time to avoid his frontal cone attack after the final tower resolves. The boss will leap back into the center and cast Doping Draft. The raid can keep burning him down as he goes through all of his RP. From this point on, the boss's attacks will be enhanced or changed based on his appearance during the cast. The boss will then cast either Octuple Lariat or Quadruple Lariat, but this time, you'll notice that he is on fire. This added effect will change the normal lariat circle attack into a donut attack instead, and players will need to move close to the boss to avoid getting hit. Don't forget to also stack with your partner or spread depending on the cast. Next, the boss will cast either Octaboom Dive or Quadra Boom Dive, and you'll notice that once again he is on fire. This effect changes the proximity based damage blast of his normal dive into a knockback, and players will need to pre position appropriately or use a knockback immunity to avoid getting knocked into the death wall. Don't forget to stack spread immediately after depending on that cast. From this point on, all players will need to pay close attention to the boss during each lariat and dive cast, as the mechanics of the attack will change based on if the boss is powered up and on fire or not. The boss will return to the center and begin to cast Brutal Impact. This attack will now hit six times, so healers be ready for the extra damage. The next tank buster will also deal six hits in a row, don't forget those cooldowns. Next up, the boss will cast Tag Team, and two clones will appear on adjacent edges of the platform. 
before. Each player will then be chained to a specific clone and be afflicted with a debuff that will destroy them at the end of its duration, unless it's removed appropriately. To do so, players must be hit on purpose by the attack of the clone that they were chained to. The two clones will begin to cast Lariat Combo, each cleaving half of the room indicated by their raised and glowing arms. Players will have to adjust into the quadrant of the arena that will get them purposefully hit by the clone they were initially chained to, but not the other one. Doing this correctly will remove the chain deathmatch debuff. After this first set of cleaves go off, both clones will then turn back to the arena and begin to cleave the other side of the room. All players will need to reposition into the safe quadrant to avoid both hits of these final clone cleaves. Immediately after, the boss will cast either quadruple or octuple lariat. Pay attention to if he's on fire or not and adjust appropriately to dodge the incoming circle or donut attack. Don't forget to also spread or stack with your partner based on the type of cast. This is followed by another set of six brutal impact raid wide blasts. Shield and heal as necessary. The boss will then cast final fuse down. This will spawn eight bombs around the platform that have either short or long fuses. All players will also be afflicted by a short or long fuse based on their role group. When a fuse runs out, the player or bomb will explode in a wide AoE circle. To handle this, it's important to understand that the bombs will always spawn in this specific pattern, but the orientation can change relative to the arena. There will always be a cluster of three long fuses in one corner, with the fourth long in the opposite corner, and the short bombs filling up the remaining spaces. To avoid blowing each other up, we have the long fused player group stack up slightly off center, tucked against the edge of the incoming short fuse bomb explosions. The short fuse players will spread out and stand on top of the long fuse bombs, as these areas will be available for them to explode in safely. Once the short fuses explode, the two groups will then switch positions. The long fuse players will then move into the spaces formed by the original short fuse bomb explosions, while the rest of the players stack off center again. Once that second round of fuse explosions go off, the fuses disappear and the boss begins to cast either Quadra Boom or Octoboom Dive towards a random edge. Check to see if the boss is on fire, then move away or use the knockback immunity for that initial dive before stacking or spreading as necessary. Next, the boss will return to the center and begin to cast Fuse Field. This will spawn a random short and long fuses around the boss and afflict all players with a long or short Bombarium debuff, based on their role group. The boss will then cast Bombarium Flame, igniting all of the fuses and forming a fire puddle inside of his hitbox. He'll then slam his fist into the fire puddle and begin to pull the sparks from each fuse towards him. If a spark reaches his fire puddle, it will explode and you will probably die. Furthermore, if a debuff is left to expire, you will probably die. To handle this, players must first identify if they have short or long debuff timers. They will then have to position themselves on top of a short or long fuse. Short timers stand on short fuses and vice versa. To avoid confusion, each role group has a priority system for who will take which fuse of the appropriate length in a clockwise direction. Once everyone has their fuse, the four short timer players will begin to resolve their debuffs by stomping on their fuse spark. This will need to be done one at a time in a controlled manner, as doing so will cause a heavy hitting damage explosion and debuff. The healers will need to shield and top everyone off in between explosions, and the next short fuse player in line will need to wait for both sufficient HP and the debuff to fall off before they move in to stomp on their spark. Once all four short debuffs and fuses are resolved, the long fuse players can start stomping on their sparks one at a time until all eight debuffs and fuse lines have been resolved. Make sure you don't wait too long in between stomps as you are also working against the timer of each debuff. Next up, another knuckle sandwich tank buster. The tanks will need to share six hits so make sure your cooldowns are up and healers are paying attention. The boss will leap into the center again and cast another doping draft, further powering up his abilities. He will then cast Quadra Boom or Octoboom Bombarian Special. This is a multi-part attack that will end with players needing to stack or spread based on the cast. He'll start with five hits that will deal raid-wide damage. This is immediately followed by a point-blank AoE circle that players must move away from to avoid and then a donut attack that players will need to move deep into his hitbox to avoid. A blue knockback circle will appear in the center as the boss runs to the ropes. Players can either use a knockback immunity or pre-position to get knocked into a corner, but they must immediately stack or spread after the knockback for the final hit of the attack. Next, the boss will cast Fuses of Fury. The same pattern of fuse bombs will appear, but this time the boss will cast Tag Team instead of giving players their own fuses. All players will need to move to the corner of the long fuse bombs to wait out the short fuse bomb explosions. As they do this, they'll need to identify which clone they are chained to. All players will also be chained to the boss during this time, meaning that in this combo they'll be afflicted with two debuffs that must be resolved by getting hit by attacks from both chained targets. The short fuse bombs will explode, and all players must immediately move into these areas to avoid getting hit by the long fuse bomb explosions. As the long fuse bombs explode, the two clones will begin their lariat combos and the boss will begin casting murderous 
dismissed. To handle all of this, players must again move into the quadrant that will have them getting hit by the clone they were chained to. Once there, they'll need to also make sure that they are standing at an angle to also be hit by the boss's murderous mist. Since this attack is 270 degrees and pretty massive, it should be really easy to get hit by as long as you're not standing directly behind the boss. Doing so correctly will satisfy and resolve both debuffs at once. If you miss getting hit by the appropriate attack, you will die. Once all three attacks go off, players will need to identify the next safe quadrant for the return of the clones. Move into that area to avoid getting hit. The clones will disappear and the boss will cast either Octoboom or Quadraboom Dive. Check to see if he's on fire and then move away or preposition to avoid getting knocked into the wall before stacking or spreading based on the cast. If you use a knockback immunity during the Bombarian special earlier, please note that it will not be back up in time for his knockback and you'll need to preposition accordingly. The boss will return to the center and cast Brutal Impact, followed by another tank buster. Since he's even more powered up, each of these attacks will now deal 8 hits total, so healers be ready. I'd also recommend tanks start using their immunities for these last tank busters to reduce stress on the healers. Next, Fuser Foe will add long and short fuses to all players. The boss will then begin to cast Infernal Spin. Two large circles in opposite corners and a frontal cone from the boss with a directional marker will appear. After each initial circle explosion, the explosion will expand as a donut around the original blast and then again as a bigger donut before disappearing. As these attacks start going off and the boss begins to turn, another two circles will appear in the remaining two corners and will explode and expand in the same manner. During this cluster of mechanics, players will also be exploding in wide circles once their fuses run out. This is a lot of stuff happening at once so let's break it down step by step. As soon as Infernal Spin begins casting and the first round of telegraphs appear, players can move to the side of the boss's frontal cone and be ready to chase it as it begins to turn. They'll turn with the boss, avoiding the first set of circle explosions, and then move into the first set of donuts. As the third set of donuts and the two new circle attacks appear, players will move into the center on top of the boss to dodge each attack. Be careful to stay behind the boss during this time until he stops turning. The second set of circles will explode and turn into donuts. All players will move towards their assigned clock positions during this time, with melee staying near their markers in the safe area of the donuts, and ranged moving out further into the donut to give them space. The short fuses will resolve during this time, and this spread will ensure nobody overlaps their explosions. For the next donut blast, all players will reposition within the available safe areas, ensuring they remain spread as close to their assigned markers as possible, since the long fuses will resolve during this time. As the final donut and fuses are resolving, the boss will begin to cast either quadruple or octuple lariat. Check to see if he's on fire, move in or out, and stack or spread depending on the cast. This is followed by another 8 hit brutal impact, shield and heal as necessary. The boss will then cast Barbarous Barrage and another 6 knockback soak towers will appear. The first part of these towers are handled in the same manner as before, with 4 players soaking the middle towers on each side, then splitting up to soak the corner towers in pairs and aiming themselves back towards the 8 person center tower that spawns late. However, this time, the boss will leap to an edge and begin to cast Lariat Combo. Players will need to identify the glowing unsafe side and position themselves within the final soak tower to be knocked into one of the safe corners opposite the boss's glow. The boss will cleave half of the room before turning back to cleave the other half. All players will need to watch the boss and identify which side the next attack is coming from. They'll then need to either stay on their safe side or quickly run to the other half of the room to avoid getting hit. The boss will return to the center of the room and cast another 8 hit tank buster. Again, I highly recommend saving your immunities for this enhanced tank buster as it can get pretty spicy with regular cooldowns. The boss will cast one final doping draft, marking the beginning of his enrage phase. He'll cast special bombardian special and perform the same 5 raid wide blasts, the circle and donut attacks before climbing back up to the top rope and ending you. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Up next, we'll head into M4S. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.